Hello my gorgeous little love books out there and welcome. In today's video, I'm gonna do another would I repurchase with 10 palettes. Let you guys know my thoughts. I feel like this is a chance for me to give you a very in-depth review about some palettes in my collection since I've had them for some time. So I'm gonna go over all of them and let you guys know my thoughts. But before we get into this video, if you're new here, hello, welcome, my name is Brie and I'm just a crazy lover of all things beauty and I like to post a lot of fun and colorful makeup content. I like to do a lot on any makeup, so if that is what you're into, then please hit that subscribe button and join this little family. But with that being said, let's get into this video. So I went through my eyeshadow collection and I literally picked the eyeshadows by covering my eyes and just pulling them off my shelves, pulling out my drawer because I wanted it to be as random as possible so I didn't have time to like pre-think my thoughts on these. I kind of wanted to think of them on the fly with you guys on camera. I feel like it's more interesting that way. But before we dive into the palette, if you're wondering about this eye look that I did, I love this so much. I was using the new Minka palette from Adapt Cosmetics, which that video should already be up. I'll link it below, I'll put it up in the corner if you wanna see how I did this beauty right here. But now let's get into the palette. So the first one on the pile is this one right here from Menagerie Cosmetics. This is a pastel pup palette. I think this is a really good pastel palette. I really enjoy it. So I definitely would repurchase this if I didn't have it anymore. I do feel like it's a staple in my collection. I feel like it's good to have a little roundup of pastel palettes because I like to use them in looks a lot. I love using pastels as inner corner highlights or if I just need to lighten something up or be like a contrast to a darker shade, I will reach for this palette. I do love that they included a dark matte in here, this beautiful like shifty blue iridescent. So you can do standalone looks with this if you wanna deepen up the shade. You can mix any of these shades and make like more of a mid-tone or a deeper shade. So I love that that option is in here. So I think this is really good and I'd be sad without it. It's cute, it has a fat little pup right here that I can't stop looking at because he's adorable. So I would totally repurchase this. And then the other one is from Colored Rain. This is the Pretty Chic palette. Now I've done reviews, I think on most of these palettes. So I will link all those reviews below if you wanna hear more about them. But this is such a pretty romantic, very red pinky tone palette with two beautiful shimmers. They're really pretty, like this one's a creamy shade. It's a rosy tone and then this beautiful like pink iridescent shade. Stunning, love it. And I would totally repurchase this one as well. The only thing with this one is this matte is really tricky. You have to use it first before any other mattes because it doesn't lay well. On the other shades, it will start to like dust away if it's not on like a more tacky base like on your eyeshadow primer. So that's the only thing with this palette. But besides that, I love it and it's workable. I can make it work on my eyes. So I love that. And then the Ah uh, Honey palette from ColourPop. Now this was really big because like people were so into their monochromatic series and I jumped right on the bang wagon. I was like obsessed with ColourPop when this came out. I was like buying all of their eyeshadow palettes. Now this one is a very light muted color story. It's too light for my liking. So honestly, I would not repurchase this if I didn't have it anymore. And this might actually be on the chopping block, maybe something that I have to declutter because I'm gonna do my declutter series soon. So this might be one that I let go because I just never think to reach for this. And a lot of my palettes already have like yellows in it that I like reach for more. So I would never think to reach for this because I would never be able to use this as a standalone palette. I like drama, I like depth. This is just too light. And then it has this pressed glitter that's not my favorite in the palette. And then the other one is from Melt. This is the Smoke Sessions palette. And honestly, I don't think I would repurchase this either. I did a whole ranking of Melt palettes and this was at the bottom. I don't think the formula is the best in this one. The metallics are a little hard to work with. A lot of them formed hard pan. I can barely pick this one up. And I do the little trick with the spoolie to get off the hard pan and it still always keeps forming hard pan every time we try to use it. And there's only two mattes in here and that's what I love from Melt. That's what is their like really good formula. Their metallics are just okay, more traditional, nothing special. So to have a palette full of not so special metallics and like two really good mattes makes it kind of a useless palette for me. So this 
maybe on the chopping block as well and something I need to declutter because I have a lot of good green eyeshadow palettes in my collection that honestly I don't need this anymore. And then going on to this one from Lois Cosmetics, this is the Meet Me at Midnight palette. I thought the color story of this was so, so pretty and I did do a whole review on it. I did an Instagram look and I do like how my looks turned out, but this is not my favorite formula. The mattes are more sheer. You have to build them up a lot and I still feel like I struggle to rip, get them fully pigment or to the pigmentation that I prefer. And then the metallics are really creamy but they're not anything intense. They're almost like creamy satins and I prefer a lot of drama when it comes to my metallics and they kind of crease because they're so emollient. Like it, it's just weird. Like they're just like almost like a cream but they're a powder. It's just not my favorite. Like I'm not a big fan of satins and I'm not a big fan of these mattes and there's like some lighter tones missing. I just really like the color story though, but I don't think I would repurchase this. And I kind of want to try the green one that they have because I heard that one has a better formula than this one. And like a lot of people like that one more. Just this was not the formula that I prefer when it comes to shadows. So I'd be okay not having that. I might even consider decluttering that one too because this declutter that's coming up needs to be ruthless. I'm planning to move soon, so I need to get rid of a lot of stuff. So the next palette is this one from the Saga of Freya collection from Oud Inside. This is the Freya Saga palette. This has two sides, a mirror in the middle and then a mirror on the other side. And then a more like nudie, warm tone side with some pops of color. Now, I never think to reach for this one. I always reach for my other more colorful palettes from Uden's Eye. So I don't think I would be sad to not have this one because this is just not my preferred color story. Don't get me wrong, the formula is beautiful in here and I love all of my Uden's Eye palettes. This one just doesn't get as much attention as the other ones that are a little bit more bold because this is just not exactly what I go for on the regular. Now, I don't think I could ever let myself declutter this because I love all my Uden's Eye palettes and they have a special place in my heart and I'm just kind of a hoarder of other products, but if it went missing, I don't know if I would rush out to buy another one. Maybe if they had like a massive sale, I would because I'm a completionist when it comes to Uden's Eye. Then the next palette is from Kaleidos. This is the Escape Pod palette. I love this. I would totally repurchase it if I didn't have it anymore. And I hope Kaleidos will come back out with these bigger palettes because they've been doing those small little quads and I like them, but I prefer the bigger setups from them. The color store in here is really pretty bright, fun, and colorful, but there are some nudie shades in here. The metallics are pretty. The mattes perform so well. Kaleidos is some of the best formula out there, so I totally would be so sad if I didn't have this. I love it so much. And then the next one is from Midas, which I think they changed their name, which I can't remember what they changed it to, because I know that they're going through a whole rebranding, but this is the Perception palette. This was a collab with the Basic B, and I have raved about this palette so much. It was such an underrated palette. I don't think a lot of people talked about it, but I love this color story. Formula, metallics, it's so, so pretty. The mattes to me are nice and pigmented. It has this beautiful pigmented white. These like poppy bright shades are so good and not a lot of people talked about this and I'm so happy that I have it. It has grunge, warm tones, depth, Everything I like about an eyeshadow palette is in this, so I would be so sad if this was gone out of my life because I don't think you can repurchase this anymore. I don't think they sell it, and that would make me so distraught to not have this anymore because I love it so much. So yes, I'd be sad without that one. Then this one is from Ace Beauté. This is the Oceanic palette. I think the color story is so, so so beautiful in this one. It's blues and greens, it's grunge, some cool tones. And this is the older formula, but I still think it's workable, even though I do love their new formula more. But this is so good. And this came out at a time where people were just getting on like the blue and green palette trends and people were getting more into wearing these kind of colors. So I love it for that reason. I love me some greens and blues. And I think you can just do so much with this. Like you can do a grunge olive look. You can do a sky blue look, a smoky blue, a very tealy like aqua kind of look. So even though this is limited on like the type of colors it is, it's 
green and blues you can still do so much with it so i would totally repurchase this and maybe in the future if they have like a good black friday sale i could see myself picking this up in the new formula because i just think it is you know better than this one but this one is still workable and i still think my looks come out stunning so yes i need this in my life and then the very last one is from glam light this is the margarita palette of course i would repurchase this one this is another one i've talked about a lot on my channel i put it in like favorite i think summer palettes maybe in favorite spring palettes like i just think it's fun it was pretty highly ranked on my glam light ranking that i did if you want to check that out i'll link it below but this is so fun bright and it makes me happy when i look at it and like the little fruit print on here then the metallics are so pretty the mattes are gorgeous too like these pastel shades are absolutely stunning they're so pigmented and glam light just has an amazing formula this beautiful green metallic is bomb like look at that look at this blue one too gosh glam light just does so well with their eyeshadows and this one i just love i'd be so sad i would get it immediately like if this was lost today i would be on glam light's website making that order because i need that in my life so that was all the palettes that i wanted to go over i think most of them i would repurchase but i had a fair amount that i wouldn't so maybe that's a good sign that i'll be able to declutter some stuff when i get to those videos so things need to go guys things need to go i have too much it's overwhelming things are all piled look look how janky it looks back there because I just can't get everything to fit and part of me doesn't want to get a bigger shelf because that means I will want to fill it up more. I don't know. I'm struggling with my obsession with eyeshadow palettes, but you guys will have to let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Were you surprised on my thoughts on these palettes or do you feel the same or what are palettes that you'd be sad without and what palettes would you not be sad without? I would love to hear from all of y'all. And if you're new here and you enjoy this video, you like a lot of fun and colorful makeup content, you like a lot of indie makeup and just a lot of fun stuff like that, then please hit that subscribe button and join this little family. Also, don't forget to check out the description below. I will have all the palettes linked where you can find them. Any videos that I did on any of these palettes, I will also link the makeup that I'm wearing in case you want to know what's on my face, how I did this look, and I'll link that video where I did this look on camera. I will also have my contact and my social media platforms. I'm also on Instagram as Breezy Lifestyle and Breezy underscore beauty. So if you want to join my Instagram fam, get some different content in your life, then I would really, really love that. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for taking the time to be here, for spending a little time out of your day to hang out with me. I really, really appreciate it. And I just hope you guys are all doing well wherever you are in the world. And I'm just sending you all so much light and love. But until next time, bye, guys.